Uh, legit playing Siegfried on player one, uh, Ruber Beef Man playing Hilda on player two. I doubt we're going to be seeing a nightmare change at any point. I'm not going to be mad at all. I would like to see whatever we got. Oh, okay, we're going for the Sig with the Hilda. Yep, you got it. All right, we eating right there with these competitive matches as Insignia is eating his nuggets. Going back into the match. <laughs> Transition. <laughs> Starting over to the match. When I get a when I get a more professional look stream, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Whenever my co-commentator does a transition, I'm gonna have like a huge like explosion graphic and everything like that. It's gonna be amazing. Just you wait. That's great. I'll spend every penny I've made on my stream on this one graphic. Oh, it's gonna have that IMAX production. Oh, but it's back right over there. Let you up with a sword, one hit game. Two K ends it up. It's not typical that you get to see a back grab in that situation. Repeat man has to be aware that uh, Legit isn't going to be interested in going for the minus 12 punish. Basically with Siegfried, when it comes to block punishes, there's minus 16 and more where he gets something amazing, and there's below minus 16 where he basically gets nothing. He gets nothing, yeah. So yeah. it's really an all or nothing, piece for famine kind of thing with Siegfried. Mm -hmm. So you can expect Siegfried to get a little bit more creative with her frame advantage rather than just take a plain old minus 12. Gotcha, right over there. Um, and uh, it's pretty good, you know, uh, when I look at Hilda, you know, as... Ooh, dang. As it's going over what there. Used it, as she saved it. That was a very disrespectful kick from Rover Beef, man. He just didn't want to end the game. <laughs> didn't know one. Didn't do it. Probably thought it was going to end. That's why I didn't press it. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> A lot of mid is coming out here, as to be expected from Hilda. She basically doesn't have a single move that isn't a mid hori. Right. There's another mid hori from Hilda. Yep. Wow, one yeah. boxes. Let's There's go. Mid hori from Hilda. <laughs> I dig it. He's got a lot of step killers too. Really good control. They're all step yeah. killers. Every single yeah. move that Hilda has is number one mid, number two a hori, <laughs> number three save, number four makes Jay cry. Every single move. Every single move sits all four of the e. Gonna be loaded up right here. Wow. Presumably yes. this is done? Yep, yep, it's done. Consider this loss. If I remember correctly, this means she has an additional lethal hit, though I don't remember which one it is. Okay, and unfortunately it was the end of the round, so she doesn't get the uh, loaded charge that she can easily get. Okay, close up the soul charge, spaces them out. Just moving around. Those patience for a little bit. Boy, the kid has just nice. not been able to find some sort of gap in Ruber Beefman's defense at the moment. It seems like any time he attempts to try and utilize his frame advantage for something that's a little bit bigger than just, you know, hot potato type soul caliber, he ends up just getting slammed down by a mid -hori. But that's pretty good. You know, that's pretty good, like, mid screen control, defensive, containing movement a lot. Um, and he is sitting on both resources right now. Oh, you died. Yeah, but you died. I was about to think, I thought he was going to go full Regalia, but uh, he's just be hitting over there. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised Legit and didn't end up breaking that grab. That's definitely the one thing you have to be worried about when Hilda is uh, just kind of going for a grab when you're around, like, guts level health, because yeah. that's going to be the killer. Okay. Looking very impressive with Reef Man is. Uh, takes uh, the first game. Going to be going into the second game right over here, but uh, we're going to be queuing up. What do you think Legit Welcome has to, to change up in order for a Ruby Beef Man um, in order to be feeling a bit more pressure than what he is right now? Well, this is kind of difficult, right? Because, like, for one, I don't play characters like Siegfried. I have a tough time understanding how slow characters are supposed to work. He's also not much of a mid-low mix kind of character. And this is one of the things that makes Hilda so powerful, is the fact that her game plan does not have a lot of clearly exploitable weaknesses. The moves that she has are all safe mid hordes That's a very difficult thing to deal with. So it, the, the whole thing can be very difficult all around. But it looks like, ooh, that oh, uh, break attack, so it just stops the move, whatever he was doing. Ah, uh, man. And that trade for trade. Okay, charged up. This is going to be a good damage. Yep. Nice as we're recovery. getting into this, uh, this reverse ledge right here, I just also wanted to mention shoutouts to Snow and Graffiti Souls for the over $25 in donations to the Match Arena, along with Manta for slightly over $10 as well. Fantastic donations as well. Appreciate you guys for supporting that one. Okay, I'm, I'm appreciate you guys if you go to that match arena and uh, smack down, you know, those contributions like uh, these players are smacking down in the ring right over here. Oh, goes with the fake out stance, pops the bubble, what? goes into CE. Whoa! I, I, that was a lot of weird decisions. 
Was that supposed to be soul? I mean, I guess, so like, after the bubble, I guess that the, the CE would potentially be fast enough to deal with a backdash in that scenario. It seems a little bit desperate. I feel like Legit actually wanted a soul a attack. Yeah, that was a hard commitment. I don't think yeah, I, I feel like soul attack data. was the way to go. It would have given him a force yeah. mix in that scenario, but, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I don't think he had enough data on the weak man's weakness on like, his options. But man, oh man, Legit is having such a hard time understanding where he's supposed to go. You can see he's not getting the lethal hits out of his stances because uh, Ruber is not blocking, which I respect. See, this is what I was talking about. The grab is not necessarily guaranteed. He can duck afterwards. Now, mm. we can take that information on those minus 12 situations a little bit more uh, if, he, if he wants to really go for something a lot heavier. But yeah, not guaranteed that you get a grab. Got it. Okay, I have the soul charge. Uh, he used to have the stage positioning, he doesn't anymore, but he got a good amount of damage. Nice! Stun confirm. Yeah, it, this is one thing that I guess Legit had to change, is that he just needs to like be able to block more. Now, that's a lot easier said than done, because these moves uh, are really tough to try to figure out like where Ruby Beast Man is trying to place them. It's a very difficult kind of mid-range way of dealing with Legit's pressure that can be uh, very, very tough. Okay, nice. Okay, check. Oh, gets the whip punish off of that. Okay, fully loaded up. Soul charge back. Gets the pressure off a little bit. Oh, as he goes into it, goes into the break attack. Nice. Size to keep the pressure on, pushes him over there. Goes towards the corner. I can respect this. I, I feel like Ruby Beefman is effective. Well, it didn't end up working out because yeah, now but... he's in here and he's doing soul charge stuff, but I appreciate the idea of just like using his round advantage to be like, okay, I'm going to spend bar and it's going to effectively make your bar useless. Now, if he wants to, he can be aggressive and try to spend his bar right now to try and like solidify this round, but I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he decides not to. Uh, no, well, he decides to offer that. Yeah. Oh, oh man, that grab would have killed yeah. it. Ugh. Beefman's getting a little bit desperate here. He's he's extending a little bit, which is uncharacteristic of him, just so he can finish out this round. I hope he doesn't end up killing himself because of that. Oh, and that's like dead! Kind of did, yeah. He's just a little bit too much. I feel like he could have been a little bit more defensive, but hey, either way, there's no real guard crush to say, and Rupert Beefman still has the bar advantage. He just needs to make sure that he's not overextending and not allowing Legit to do exactly what he's doing right now. Oh, oh, wow. Uh, there could have been a lot more scarier, more especially more. since the corner. Yeah, especially since the corner. Uh, just because the super corner shelf with the level 2 GI. Uh, but it's not going to be much to put his initiative over there. Oh, <laughs> nice grab over there. So, so we saw the first time we saw a grab happen. And then the second time we saw Ruby Beefman duck the grab. So this time legit does a slight sidestep. Then he does the grab. That's good. Nice meta stuff in there to kind of mess with your opponent's defensive options. Oh, no, how to deal with the bubble. Oh. All right, puts him over there into the frames. Oh, blocks! Nice, that's a punish! It doesn't kill, though! He does not have... Some stagger hits. Oh, and the low does not hit! Extends outward, and Uber Beefman is going to surrender that round over to Legit. That Legit was a great, great clutch moment from him. Yeah, I gotta say, Uber Beefman on both the last two rounds. So, in the second to last round, he... It overextended pretty pretty heavily, which allowed Legit to make like a pretty clutch comeback. And then the other round, in, in the last round, I feel like River Beef Man's punishes weren't necessarily on point, and I think that's just because of some flubbing of some charge moves. I'm just speculating here, I'm not 100%. But uh, that, that's my guess. Are we gonna see? Okay, <laughs> so, so we are alternating between Legit getting a grab after that minus 12 situation, or the grab gets stuck. I guess next time we'll see that situation, Legit will guarantee get a grab. <laughs> As we're seeing from there, oh, goes for a little bit of go walks up, twitches, blocks, tries to anticipate different movement, staggering his pressure a little bit, odds the flatback whips. Legit is definitely getting that download. You were asking me before when he lost the first game, what does Legit have to do? I wasn't entirely sure, but it really seems like Legit has figured out some level of timing in Rubber Beef Man's tactics that has allowed him to get size fits like this. This is like and the 15th time we've seen a size step like this just clutch it out for Legit. But he also like put Rubber Beef Man in a situation where he convinced them uh, to actually be more on the offensive, and it's actually not working out in these situations where he's going a bit of overextending. Like you said before, there were two rounds where he just gave up because he just sidestepped after overcommitting, tried to get legit, defending a bit too much. 
can force options and then go back to that defensive game, but it's not working out for sense. Okay, ooh, and he whips again, like I'm just saying, yeah. Over the off extension, not spacing himself properly. I'm still behind on the life, but I mean, even still, it's just... get his charge. Oh, uh, that's the second time he didn't get his charge hit, but he's ends... Okay, so he's not going to be winning out the round this time around. So that was a pretty solid round win for Beef Man to make sure that uh, Legion had to spend his bar fruitlessly, which is pretty solid. But again, yeah, it's just like... It really seems like if this is going to be a match of who, whomever whiffs less is going to be the winner. And they're both kind of whiffing kind of a lot. <laughs> and so it's going to be a matter of like who ends up either getting the most amount of damage out of those situations or who provides that situation the least to their opponent. Yeah. It would also have been really great if Ruby Fink got to spend that bar, but it will not be the case, unfortunately. I cannot let this man escape. As we're going and progressing into it. Okay. Pressure's up. Man, Legit so sitting on perfect. the last round potentially. Reef Man has to answer over to that. Okay, gets the trade. I can't say that benefited anybody for it. It's a mutual point. Oh man. This is like the Best Buy Rewards program. Okay, goes in. Hey, he spends the barn now, but I, I don't know. I mean, this means that he's going to be at a disadvantage in the next round, but perhaps that's okay. Uh, oh, that was a nice jump over that low break attack. Didn't want to contain the pressure. Gets hit by the low. Beefman's going to spend his other bar. Aha! We went for a different kind of punish. Punishing River Beefman's duck at minus 12. Makes sense. Forces him to spend that soul charge. Now you have to deal with this bubble. That Looking like he has to deal with the bubble. Of so his damage from the soul charge. There it is. Work. All right, it. Ooh, a reversal oh, hit. Steps in reversal hit. State, and that's going to be a punish. Equals up the round. Reversal hit. Last round reversal hit. Shoutouts to Dexos. Definitely. But okay, this is kind of what I was talking about. Rubber Beefman had to spend all of his resources to get to this last round. Now Legit has all, everything he could possibly want, except for his guard's gauge trouble, which I don't think is really going to come into play. Oh no, you just died. Okay, just hit yeah. him mid. Yeah. Nice. Contains the step. Man, Open the pressure. Hurt. Got whipped. Yeah. Not enough for the punish, though. A little bit of damage on the guard. He gets hit again. So close to losing. Rubber Beefman's going to be desperate for a lick. Legit. Probably is going to be going off to the round, but Peak Man says something about really it. Gonna be, I was going to say, you're really going to be able to pull this out, but overall, I think it was just an overextension on the verticals at the end. I think Ruby Fan eventually got 